Hello YouTube, excuse the hot blazing sun. We have a welding project and we'll show them rods later. Because I'll mess up by tell you what size unless I reach over here and get them. But I'll hold it up to the camera. This is the best I've learned on the internet of what to use on this welder. The best brand, the best size. 564 as you figured out. That's better than a 16th. The 16th inch rods burnt like matchsticks. We've been playing with them. We even filled a hole in it a piece of metal. That's just playing around. That's not good beads. Because uh, this welder, it's kind of funny. You'll see the beads. You, you're just kind of melting it in a little puddle. It's a little bitty rod. Here's going to be the legs. Three foot tall, 15 inches square. Because that's all I've got for that. And I have to clean that off. That got dropped down beside the building around back. And forgotten about and rusted. So we have to clean all that off with a 36 grit you can do this 36 grit flapper disc so off to clean up the metal and get the metal cut first we've already tested to make sure it works uh the cable has been coiled up in the box so we're gonna hook them again and hang them out in the sun so they warm up so let's get to work well okay we're setting in the shade so it's gonna be shadowy i might have said 15 we're making them 16 uh, I'm going to show you a way to make sure these are all the same length when I'm done cutting. So I'm using a fat sharpie, a big old square. And I like this better than a measuring tape. You know, basically when we're all done we're going to stack them up and make sure they're all ground to the same length. So That's how we're going to make sure. So nothing's exact on this. It's just a little stand that's going to be used for uh, in the shop or welding on. 16 is not that big of a top, but we want to overhang the top of it someday to get clamps on. So the top can end up being like 18. You have an inch sticking out, you know, so you can put your clamp on it. So it's going to be like a small work welding table. And of course you make the bottom bigger too and weight it down so it doesn't tip over. So it's what we got to work with, that's what we're going to use. Okay, I hope you can see it in the shadows, because I'm in a nice shape. See where those are squared up? They're kind of tricky to clamp. And see where those aren't? We're going to go mount these in the bench vise and cut and smooth them off so they're even. And we'll also take the flapper disc to these ends and make sure they're even. That's just why I do it. This was all marked out. I said just hurry up, chop the angle iron down, cut it with a four and a half inch grinder. Because I don't have a chop saw, so this is one way to guarantee they're all going to be the same length when I make squares out of them. So take four pieces to make a square you'll see what I mean because so I got to put the 45 degree cuts on them yet okay we're gonna do this an easier way we don't want to cut 45 degree corners just for a cheap little stand it will have it squared up it's gonna be a little longer one way than the other way if you think about it see how these go on the inside the other ones go on the outside but we'll have two identical pieces we're welding on plywood, we're just going to tack weld. This is the only table I have to work on, but remember, it's just a stand. It does not have to be perfectly straight, level, or anything. It's going to set outside on the dirt and be used to work on. So we're just going to put a little bead in here. Just a small bead, and that'll hold it, and we can flip around and do the other side. Okay, that's just a spot well mill in there. I'm going to try to make some good beads, so that's why I'm building this to practice. I had it turned all the way up to 80 because I want to just tack and done. Uh, then we'll go around and finish welding that in a few other spots. Uh, we don't really have to weld that together because that's going to be inside the angle iron. So we're going to decide where else we want to weld this. <laughs> This is about one of the best welds I can do. This stuff's got so much flux and there's all kinds of excuses, but I tried uh, around 50, then I went to 55, I think, on this one. But it will go up to 80 on the knob. I don't know if that's really amps or not. You know, if it's really correct, like it's really 80 amps. But it's a nice little weld if you get to hang to it on small stuff. But I built camp stoves and I did better than this because I got used to it. You know, like, that wasn't really bad for a little small spot of spot welding. 
But you'll never see this. This will be on the bottom. So a lot of the wealth on this project will be hidden. Well, that's the best I can do. We've got two of these made. So we're going to call it good. This will be part one. We're not going to weld these. And remember, these will be welded inside the angle iron. So that's why they're just welded like this on the inside. It'll be strong. This stuff is cheap. Do not use this for structural on a car frame or anything. It is brittle. I had a camper I showed in a video camper frame and show where all the welds broke right beside the metal. This stuff is called a bed frame, whatever. It don't make anything structural out of it and trust your life in it. It is cheap junk metal. It is brittle. It will snap. Welding it changes everything. It's just good enough for a little stand. So there's your disclaimer. Thanks for watching. Look for the pictures.